Here are our notes on Charles' law. So we've just learned about Boyle's law. Um, so we know that Boyle's law deals with pressure and volume. So now Charles' law deals with volume and temperature. So we're going to hold pressure and number of moles constant in Charles' law. So Charles' law, again, pressure is constant. Charles' law um, has, deals with volume and temperature. It's directly proportional. And one thing that's interesting about the temperature is that it must be in Kelvin, which is a unit of measurement. And we will work on converting to Kelvin in a couple of slides. As you increase the temperature, when we're dealing with Charles' law, we need to understand that molecules are going to move faster. That's an increase in kinetic energy, and so those molecules jump around more. And when that happens, they're going to hit the sides of the container more, and if we want to keep our pressure constant, we have to change our volume. So let's look at the same diagram as we did with Boyle's law. So here we've got our piston, our thermometer, our pressure gauge, all of the things that we were looking at with our Boyle's law. And we're going to talk about what's happening when we increase the temperature. So gas pressure is kept constant by allowing the pistons to move freely, keeping the internal pressure equal to the constant external pressure. For example, if the internal, initial internal pressure is equal to the external pressure, and if the internal pressure goes up, the piston will move up until the pressure becomes equal again. So that's how the pressure will stay even, so that the volume and the temperature can change. The number of gas particles is kept constant by being sure that the system has no leaks. So that's our number of moles, which is equal to the variable N. We will study that when we study the ideal gas law. So when the temperature is increased, the average velocity of the particles increase. This is where we were talking about the kinetic energy. So it increases the average force per collision and the rate of collision. So just, that just means that those molecules are going to move faster. If they move faster, they're going to hit the walls more. And as you learned in Boyle's law, if it hits the wall more, that it increases the pressure. So again, this leads to an initial increase in the internal pressure. Because the internal pressure is greater than the external pressure, the piston will move up and the volume will increase to help keep that pressure constant. So as you can see, that piston moving, the pressure is staying constant, and the temperature is changing here. So the increased temperature leads to an increased rate of collision. The initial increase in pressure, the piston moves up, until the internal pressure equals the external pressure. So now we have an increased volume and a change in temperature. Do you see that this is a direct relationship? As the volume goes up, the pressure also goes up. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint slides now. So again, temperature must be in Kelvin. So the reason why it's in Kelvin is gases were found to have a, quote, zero volume at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So essentially what gases were doing was moving so slow that it was almost like they had a zero volume. And they found that at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So this was named absolute zero, and it equals zero Kelvin. And so when we do our math for Charles' law and really any of our gas laws, we need to make sure that our math is in Kelvin. So to convert to Kelvin, we add 273 to the degree Celsius. To go from Kelvin to degree Celsius, we subtract 273. You will need to know these, so please make sure that you commit this to memory. The equation for Charles' law is V1 over V2 equals T1 over T2. So please watch your ones and twos. Okay, V1 and T2 here, just be careful. A lot of people, when they mess up on this, switch your T's. So just V1, T2 equals V2, T1. Be careful with that. This is a directly proportional law. So if I were to draw volume and temperature, my graph would look something like that. So directly proportional versus inversely proportional graphs, you do need to know the difference. Another graphic and just kind of a freeze frame of what we looked at on our diagram before from the website. So the effects of the increasing temperature of a sample of gas at constant pressure. The molecules, again, are going to move faster because you're increasing the kinetic energy. So they hit the container harder. Thus, the size must increase to keep the pressure the same. So showing here the temperature increases, those molecules are moving faster. Hopefully you can kind of see that by the longer dashes behind them. So as in order to keep that pressure constant, the volume has to increase. So a math problem here. A sample of neon gas occupies a volume of 752 mils at 25 degrees Celsius. What volume will it occupy at 50 degrees Celsius? 
Again, the pressure is constant. The other thing that's constant is the number of moles or molecules. So first thing, as the temperature increases, what should happen to the volume? Because you know it's a direct relationship, you know that the volume will increase. So now we're going to check that with our math. First thing that you need to make sure that you remember is that we've got to change our degrees Celsius to Kelvin. I also like to list out, especially once we start getting into the Charles Law math, the, the variables so that you make sure that you put your T1 and your T2 values in the correct spot. So we're just going to list out our givens so we know our initial volume is 752 milliliters. We know that our initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, and this also gives me an opportunity to show my work in terms of how I changed my degree Celsius to Kelvin. So again, to go from degree Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273, so just right here. So my initial temperature is 298 Kelvin. My volume 2 is what I'm trying to find, so there's my variable. And then my temperature 2 is 50 degrees Celsius plus 273 Kelvin, so I've got 323 Kelvin. So now I can plug it into my algebraic formula. I prefer to do the linear formula simply because it's easier for me. You can do the, the fraction formula if you'd like. It's really up to you. Mathematically, it will come out the same. So if we plug in our variables, we've got our 752 mils. We know that this is our T2. That's another reason why I like to write it out right underneath there so I know I haven't put my temperatures in the wrong spot. I've got my variable here, and I've got my T1 here. Simply solve for V2. And be I'm here, my volume did go up because my temperature went up. I am checking my relationship just like we talked about with Boyle's Law. And I know mathematically I have done that correct. So there is Charles' Law, and we will get on to Gay-Lussac's Law in the next lesson.